Hello students, today I shall discuss about the physical parameterization schemes used in numerical weather prediction model. In numerical weather prediction model, we use grid cells to represent a particular value of atmospheric parameters, mean value we use. However, some parameter, some events like atmospheric uh, turbulence, uh, some build shape of the buildings, those are very much less than the grid size of the mod nwp model a, a model cannot resolve any uh, this uh, lo local flows which are very much smaller than the uh, grid size of the model however this model must include or take into account the effect of this surface on the low level wind flow with a single number of expression that goes into the friction term in the forecast wind equation. Taking in into account this effect without actually simulating them is called parameterization. The, there are many complex processes in the atmosphere that need to be parameterized in numerical weather uh, prediction model. Example radiative process, cloud processes, turbulence. The number of the number and type of parameterizations that are used depend on the model resolution and what the model is to be used for. Okay. So let us consider the mathematical expressions how the mathematically uh, this uh, parameter parameterization is needed. So uh, as already you know the seven equations of numerical weather prediction. So first equation uh, defines the Newton's second law or, or the conservation of momentum where the second law is the continuity equation or the conservation of mass. Third one is the equation of state of ideal gas and then thermodynamic uh, conservation of energy. After, at last it is the moisture equation. So after this equation when we convert this equation in x, y and z component that, uh, and in speri spherical polar co uh, component we get this type of equations you can see so the equation 6, 7 and 8 are the three components of the momentum equation uh, equation 9 is the same as the continuity equation or, or conservation of mass and then other two equations are also shown so here process of water through the phase changes qv must be defined within the model commonly the set of equations above is called the primitive equations these seven equations with seven unknowns represent a state of universal equations for numerical weather prediction These basic equations of an, a numerical weather model include term of friction, heating source and evaporation and condensation processes. Specifically, the momentum equation has the effect on eddy fluxes of momentum. The thermodynamic equation includes radiative heating and cooling. Sensible heat fluxes and condensation of evaporation Condensation and evaporation, the water vapor equation includes condensation and evaporation as well as moisture flux. These physical processes in numerical model represent their contribution. Thus, the model should include surface and planetary boundary layer processes, radiative transfer and cloud microphysics in order to represent their contribution. That means, in the atmosphere, as large systems are also there as well as small wind circulation which are less than one kilometer like in a, inside near the building also you can see some circulation of wind pattern small small thunderstorms are there so those things has to be considered which cannot resolve the result by the model grids for example, atmospheric motion includes a broad spectrum of temporal and spatial scales. That means the time scale spans may be between 1 to 10 to the 6 second, 6 second and beyond, including the life cycle of a small turbulent year. Means very small 
uh, air which you, you can observe in your eye vision within some few meters as well as some motions like seasonal and interseasonal variations the spatial scales range from 1 cm to 10,000 km so more than 1 km those can be calculated by the grids those equations can solve but less than the, those uh, 1 km which if you are considering the grid as 1 km less than those events cannot be resolved by the model Due to the use of numerical discretization method to solve partial differential equations, the grid resolution of atmospheric model is always limited. Therefore, any process that occur on a scale smaller than the grid space cannot be explicitly represented in the numerical model, even though their contribution cannot be ignored. Okay, so small size phenomenon which are occurring in the atmosphere those are very important but still grid size is limited below the uh, particular size of the grid we cannot reduce the grid because it is again computationally very expensive that's why what we have to, we have to do we cannot uh, ignore the effect also and we cannot minimize uh, uh, maximize the resolution of the grid also so what to do in that sense to get, give an example Reynolds average uh, like uh, we I'll also show in, in the equation Reynolds average we have to use for such components so for example uh, it will be here say u component of the wind as given by u average and u prime where u bar that is the average or mean value of the u and u bar u average uh, u bar is the uh, resolvable component and u prime is the unresolvable component so if we put this type of things uh, some fraction added with the uh, components of the wind temperature pressure and we, if we put in the primitive equations let us consider the equation 6 the moment, momentum equation that is the x component of momentum equation they, there if we use uh, u del u del x instead of u we are writing u bar plus u prime and we if we replace it then we are getting u del u del x whole bar equals to this equation okay now since with the reynolds assumption with the reynolds uh, average assumption we can write these assumptions a uh, prime bar equals to zero like this if we use these assumptions then finally we can see at last when we are getting del u bar del t that is the x component of the momentum equation then we can see there is five terms at the right side plus another term one by rho double bar and some components are there the first five terms these first five terms are the mean components means resolvable components whereas the other terms are called the unresolvable components so in this equation the first component of the five terms can explicitly be represented by model grid values so model grid values also uses mean value so similar as the first components the second components in the three terms inside the uh, bracket cannot explicitly be resolved at model grid points but their contribution cannot be ignored because these subgrid scale processes depend on and in turn affect the large scale field and processes that are explicitly resolved by numerical models. I hope you understood. That means small scale processes cannot be resolved by the model. And again those processes are very much important. That's why these components has to be resolved okay overall an nwp model consists of two major parts so you can see this uh, figure dynamical process and another is first you can see this uh, figure two type of components will be there one component 
dynamic dynamics of the model indicates indicates uh, schematically a resolved process and the model physics the process that must be parameterized so what you are seeing in the figure the bold box which shows the dynamical process that dynamical processes can be solved by model however the other processes which cannot be solved those are called the physics of the model that's why the term comes physical parameterization now we have to make a method to solve those problems that is why the term we are using it is physical parameterization so different types of physical parameterizations are there namely microphysical parameterization cumulus parameterization radiative parameterizations so around four uh, to seven parameterization schemes are there which model cannot solve but uh, explicitly cannot be solved but we have to solve by parameterizing process so first let's discuss about radiation and chemical processes so it is uh, pretty evident that in the atmosphere some radiations and chemical processes are there in the figure you can see assume uh, this figure you can see from the sun incoming solar radiations are coming which are absorbed by the atmosphere different parts of the atmosphere different different surfaces waters are there clouds are there so different particles absorb differently after that some condensation will be happening inside the cloud reflection or absorption at earth surfaces of the uh, incoming solar radiation will be done so there it will be soil water and snow melt where the hot surfaces are there snow ice water different different parts of the uh, atmosphere is shown in a single figure so some scattered uh, uh, solar radiation from the aerosol particles also showing emissions from the clouds are also showing here right side you can see deep convection warming of the clouds are there as well as rain by cooling so different different parts of the solar radiation has been shown so specially for this solar radiation the radiation scheme performs computations of short wave and long wave radiation radiative fluxes using the predicted values of temperature humidity cloud and monthly mean climatologies from aerosol and the main trace gases like carbon dioxide ox uh, ozone uh, methane nitrogen dioxide etc the radiation parameterization describes the radiative transfer process cloud radiation interaction are usually taken into account since finding the solution of radiative transfer equation to obtain the fluxes is computationally very expensive expensive depending on the model configuration full radiation calculations are commonly performed on a reduced that means very larger uh, uh, radiation grid or at a uh, reduced time frequency you got it if you uh, make a time frequency less and make a coarser uh, domain uh, grid resolutions then it will be easier to solve next we are coming convection so as you can see convections are happening in the right part of the atmosphere uh, means figure the moist convection scheme represents deep including congestors shallow and mid-level elevated moist layer convection the distinction between deep and shallow convection is made in the convection scheme most convection are also resolved the entrainment process and diurnal variation of the convection okay the effect of updraft and downdraft also simulated by different different uh, method like arakawa 2014 method so in convection also parameterization has been down done now we are coming cloud microphysics and precipitation that is one of the most important parameterization scheme because cloud particles and rain waters are very small compared to the domain size so it has to be very carefully parameterized to get a very 
near accurate results and model output if we don't parameterize cloud microphysical properties like cloud particles or ice droplets uh, ice particle water droplets then our forecast result will be very much different from the actual cloud microphysics encompasses all cloud processes that occur on the scale of the cloud droplet and the hydrometers including cloud droplets rain droplets ice crystals, snowflakes, reaming, uh, reamed ice particles, grapple particles and hail, hailstones rather than on the scale of the cloud itself. I hope you understood. We are not considering the size of the cloud. We are considering the particle size of the cloud. In a large scale model, clouds and large scale precipitation are parameterized with a number of prognostic equation for cloud liquid, cloud ice, rain and snow water content and a subgrid fractional cloud cover also parameterized which is the prognostic equation. That means with the known equations using some numerical values we are calculating those uh, for each for each particles. In high resolution models, especially regional models at the cloud primating scale, cloud microphysical process are explicitly represented by the microphysics of the liquid, ice and vapor with detailed configuration and phase changes. So here so many things will be considered like when water is uh, changed to uh, ice or ice is melting to water when they are also we have to consider the latent heat equations so everything has to be considered next we are coming for soil and surface the surface parameterization scheme represents the surface flux of energy and water and the corresponding surface quantity the scheme should describe different subgrid surface you can see in the figure Subgrid, uh, su surface in the different part of the figure is different. Somewhere mountain is there, somewhere water is there, somewhere uh, small, um, small hills, trees, buildings will be there. So in that case all the layers of the soil and as well as the uh, type of the um, elevation of the surface has to be considered. Next we are coming turbulent diffusion and planetary boundary layer scheme. The turbulent diffusion scheme represents the vertical exchange of heat, momentum and moisture through subgrid scale turbulence. Subgrid means the size would be lower than the size of a grid. That means inside a grid. So inside a grid, what is the small uh, fraction of wind is moving from one side to another side. Another, uh, all the layers of the boundary that means around uh, nearly two to three kilometers from the surface those all those things will be considered in the turbulent diffusion and planetary boundary layer scheme a total water distribution function is used to convert from the moist uh, conserved variable to a prognostic cloud variable liquid or ice water content and cloud fraction but only for the treatment of Stratocumulus, this has to be done. Convective clouds are treated separately by shallow convection scheme. So, different different type of clouds are considered differently. Okay, in this case, in the actually all the clouds are forming in the planetary boundary layer first. That's why all the cloud types are has has been considered. So, apart from these, uh, so many others uh, parameterization schemes are also there like orographic drag, non-orographic gravity, wave, etc. So, like this, around 6-7 uh, parameterization schemes are used. In future, more parameterization schemes will be coming like lightning, uh, potential index, how to detect lightning also. So, I hope you understood what is the meaning of parameterization and what are the uh, most probable parameterization schemes are used in the numerical weather prediction model. So thank you.